being resplendent in the biggest headdress. Of course, it's a flower. Um, I think it's white. Is that right? It's blue. Oh, okay. It doesn't quite show up that colour, but it's a pale blue then. Pale blue, yes. Very pale blue. Not that I'm feeling blue. I just thought, you know, a bit of contrast against the burgundy top would uh, stand out and, and be lovely for the interview. It certainly does stand out. So today we're talking about cut flowers that come from the Mediterranean. Is that correct? Uh, Middle East. Oh, Middle East. Yeah. Sorry. So um, we all know the Middle East to be the birthplace of three major uh, religions, which are, which is Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, and not just um, the beautiful, sweet and sour landscapes that the Middle East stands for. Um, you know, it also represents sorry. a handful of gorgeous cut flowers. No, sorry, um, I have to say that again because I had a I had a moment. <clears throat> So the oh, Middle East stands for those three religions. So the Middle East stands for three major religions, which is Christianity, Judaism and Islam. And let's just throw in that it also stands for a handful of amazing cut flowers, which are my favourites, actually. Uh, aren't they all my favourites? And I the list they... is... <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chula originally comes from Turkey, yes, and you're probably thinking, no way, Turkey? Indeed, Turkey. Um, uh, Miss Snapdragon comes from Morocco, Turkey and Syria. Miss Hypericum comes from North Africa and the Middle East. Um, Mr. Hyson, South Turkey, North Israel, North and East Iran, and you've got to help me with this name, Turkmenistan? Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan. That's it. It's not a familiar word in my vocabulary, so there's a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and Ranunculus is another one. Ranunculus um, comes from Syria and Turkey and Malakabam, that's it. Almost forgot that one. But uh, who would have thought? I mean, I, I never knew many, many, many years ago that the Middle East, so dry in climate, can come up with these amazing, gorgeous blossoms, which are also long lasting blossoms. It is very surprising. Is there, there must be some region within these countries that has sufficient water and sufficient good soil for these plants to grow i mean snapdragon for example you always see yeah. as english flowers In, indeed or, or malacca balm also has another name you know the bells of ireland um and uh, you know for many years i thought those cut flowers came from ireland because <laughs> they're called the bells of ireland but uh, also known as like a balm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, who, who would have thought that the Middle East with such a dry climate, maybe it's the faith that keeps them alive. I mean, three major religions, the birthplace is the Middle East, such an amazing special place uh, that I'd love to visit. But I can understand that the tulips might grow there because they do grow in cold climates. If you think about the Netherlands where it's the home of the tulip now, uh, no, indeed. They... indeed but you know it's 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 funny how they adopted the tulip but their national cut flower isn't the tulip <laughs> oh really what <laughs> yeah no. no it's not the netherlands no but um but look um the, the, just like humans represent um, different cultures of the world, uh, cut flowers are representing different cultures of the world. So if, if you want to have a Middle Eastern uh, feast and you want the cut flowers of the Middle East to represent what, you know, sits on your dining table or in your outdoor 
you know, barbecue area. Think of these Middle Eastern cut flowers, which are going to add to your theme. Oh, excellent. So you could actually have a mix of tulips and hyacinths in spring in particular, yeah. because that's when they all start flowering. And you probably could have snapdragons a little bit later on. And, of course, the ranunculus. They, uh, well, I've got some in the garden too, so I'm hoping for a show of ranunculus. Oh, I can't wait. They're, aren't they just adorable? Like They look like um, cupcakes, so adorable that you, you just want to sink your teeth in them. But for the listeners who, you know, attend Mass every Sunday, uh, Jesus his birthplace is the Middle East. So if, if you want to keep that theme going, you know, think of these cut flowers that we've just spoken of, and I'll repeat the list, um, Miss Malacca Balm, uh, Miss Ranunculus. And the reason why I'm saying Miss is because, uh, you know, they, they come from seed-based. So when it comes to enjoying them in a vase full of water, uh, you need to slip on the heels. When I say the term Mister, you then cut the stem straight across, which is the flush, or I, I say slip on the sneakers. Um, so hyacinths and tulips, they're male, so um, you need to cut the, cut the stem flush. Um, and and uh, hypericum, who would have thought that hypericum, St John's wort, is also Middle Eastern? Um, uh, just a lovely um, lineup of cut flowers and, yeah, enjoy. And mm -hmm. hopefully we'll talk about other parts of the uh, world in uh, future radio podcasts. Okay, it's been lovely chatting with you as usual. We're always finding something new. Um, yes, yeah, so next week I'll catch up with you with more exciting information about cut flowers. Absolutely, Marianne. Have a, an amazing week, my darling Blossom, and thank you again for this opportunity. You're welcome. <laughs>